Okay, so where we are, yes, we are trying to select elements from the web page. Now, I'll talk about that very detailed in this video, but first and foremost, I will be giving you some of the exercise files later on in the section and in the course. And all of these files, please don't ask me again and again in the comment section where they are hosted, where's the GitHub. All of these files are available at learncodeonline.in in the new JavaScript course. It's absolutely free and all of the files are available in there. So make sure you just keep an eye there. There is no GitHub, there is no any third party resource, it's all there. So just make sure you are aware of it. Okay, coming back onto the point, how can we select elements on the web page? This is one of the most common tasks you will be performing and finding the element is uh, sometimes challenging because sometimes it's buried down under a couple of divs. It has sometimes unique classes, sometimes have unique IDs and sometimes none of them. Trying to find out the element is the tricky thing and after that everything is such a breeze. You want to create more items similar to that or you want to manipulate that or you want to delete that. That's super easy to do. Hunting for the element can be challenging. And broadly, I can say that there are two ways of finding out the element. Surely, 100%, there are many methods that you can mention in the comment section. And I can make this more tricky if you want. I can make it more complex, but what's the point of it? We are here to make things easy so that you can learn it, understand it, and most importantly, perform it. So we're gonna say that there are two ways of hunting for the elements. The one is by a query selector, and another one is get element by. I will discuss both of them in a second, but let's first go ahead and try to create some exercise file for us. I will give you later on some in the exercise section, but right now it's important that you grab this one right from here and you write this one. So again, we are on the index.html and make sure you follow along with me all the modification that you want to do later on. Feel free to do it, but first at least once try along with me. So hit the exclamation sign and hit the tab. It will auto complete for all the things. Now inside the body, we're gonna have a div. Then inside the div, we're gonna use these uh, less than, greater than, whatever you say them, these signs. Then we're gonna have a simple h1, which is going to have a class. That means I'm gonna put a dot and I'm gonna say title and I'll hit the tab. This is auto completion. This is emit that's kicking in. So make sure you are aware of that. I do have a separate course on emit. It's free, but right now you don't need it. And then I'm gonna just mention a learn code online dot in. Feel free to later on change it, but right now at least just follow along with me so that we can produce the same results. Okay, now just go ahead and open this up by double clicking and there we go, we get that. Again, uh, just double click that onto any, uh, whatever, uh, you're opening it up in the directory listener or finder, whatever is on the system you are. So we're gonna just close this one. Now usually I prefer to do all of these things inside a code editor, but here it's gonna be much more easier for you to understand in the console. Right click and hit the inspect and we're gonna go to console. And now, first and foremost, we can hold anything inside a variable. So we're gonna call this one as title. Okay, that's great. But how we're gonna store this exact information, learn code online inside this title? First and foremost, everything is a document. We have already seen that. Now inside the document, as soon as I put a dot, a lot of methods are available to me. For example, I can select uh, all the BG color, all the body. I can select all the children's. I can select the URL, active element. There's a whole lot that is given to you. And there are a few methods. The first is document.querySelector. So notice here there are two, the bottom one, query selector and query selector all. Query selector is moreover like a jQuery style of selection where you can just mention the classes and IDs and everything in just one selector. Followed by, of course, hash or a dot, but we are not here for that. First and foremost, we want to understand this get element. And you're gonna see there is a variety of them. Get element by ID, get element by class name, get element by tag name, and a whole bunch of them. Eventually, almost all of them were pretty much similar, but Again, there are subtleties, there are differences, but we're gonna go for the tag name first here. So how does this work? And again, notice here the S, which is frequently uh, missed by a lot of beginners. It is get elements by tag name. So it's gonna grab more than one element. Right now on our web page, there's just one element, so it's easier for us to grab. So I'm gonna put a pair of parentheses here. Now, what element I want to grab? There is just one H1 that I want to grab. So let's go ahead and grab that. All I have to do is come here, inside the two quotes, I have to mention the that particular tag. Is it a A tag, is it a H1 tag, H2, whatever the tag is, I can actually grab it. 
But what's more interesting for you is to find out that what actually this query grabs it for you. So if I just say the title, notice here if I hit enter, this gives me HTML collection. And notice here, this HTML collection, I hope you can see the square brackets, and whenever you see the square bracket, that means it's an array. And this array has got a lot of things in here. So as soon as I open the first value here, it has got a lot of things like how many child nodes you are having, how many children you are having, what is your base URL, and uh, what not, inner HTML, inner text, there is a whole lot of thing. Precisely notice here that as of now, the inner HTML and the inner text is giving us the same values, which is learn code online.in. So how can I access this? I can access this in one line or I can access this in later on in storing some variable as well. Let's go ahead and try to access that in the same line. So what I'm gonna do is I know that it gives me an array all the time. So I want to access the zeroth value or the very first value of it. And inside that, I saw that I have a property which is inner text or either inner HTML, which is giving me the same things as of now. But surely they are a little bit different in different use cases. I probably will go in depth later on in some videos, but I'm not sure of that. But once I actually hit the enter here, notice, let's just see what is now inside the title. If I run the title, it says you got a string which is learn code online. So now this is the way how you grab any value of it. Surely there are subtleties between inner HTML and inner text. Most of the time you want to grab the inner text, but let's just say this is the easier case we have. Okay, moving a little bit on more of this. So let's just say we have a title two, and again, we're gonna fire the same query, document.getElement. This time I don't want to say get element by tag name. I want to use something like get element by class name or ID. Notice here, IDs are unique for every element classes may get repeated. That's why it says get element by ID and the second one says get elements by class name because class name will give you surely or possibly many results. So it's very important that you keep an eye on that. When I say get elements by class name and I provide a class name here, which is gonna be in this case title. Now notice, let's see what it gives us to us. So we're gonna say title two. It again gives me an HTML collection. If I open this up, Again, an array is given to me, and again, the same values are coming up because it's the same object technically. But in theory, you're gonna receive many such objects. So you might have to loop through the values and stuff. We will be doing a bit, a bunch of that. Uh, so it's important that you understand the subtleties and different between, difference between all of them. So I'm gonna go the element again, and I'm gonna go for inner HTML or inner text this time. And let's hit enter. And again, let's just see what's there in the title too. Again, we are able to grab the same result. So the whole story short, there are multiple ways of grabbing the elements. I have just shown you two. I could have inserted an ID there, or I could have used the query selector as well. So what's the precise way of learning these things? No precise way. You eventually try out these things on the console. You just play them around and you know me, I post a whole lot of videos on YouTube about these things uh, with the name of different web scraping and stuff. But again, this knowledge is more than enough for us to at least create a few basic projects or something fun elements on the web page. Again, this is a very basic text element that I'm giving you. In the future videos, I will be giving you more complex text and CSS files so that we can write some, C uh, some JavaScript for that. Select the elements, modify them, and have fun with them. So again, this is the most essential information, but don't you worry, I'm here, I'm gonna make everything super easy and you're gonna have fun in the JavaScript like you have never done before. That's it for this one, hit that subscribe and let's catch up in the next video. I hope you're excited.